Hi everyone, this is Maverick Puan, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through the IUPAC nomenclature for organic compounds. Now involving the naming of organic compounds, we have a few rules that is set by the IUPAC system. So basically what we have to do is we have to be familiar with these rules and we need to name the organic compound in a very rigid and standardized way so that different people who are naming the same compound, they will essentially name them in the exact same way. Now for this video, we will have a total of three examples. So if you are familiar with the naming of organic compounds, it is a good idea to see these compounds and you try to name them first before going through this video. So the first example will be here. Now the most important thing is for us to identify the most important functional group inside this compound. For this compound, we have two functional groups, the acid functional group and the aldine functional group. Now halogen is always considered as a substituent in the naming of organic compounds. So therefore we know that the functional group will be the acid functional group. So this is our functional group here. Now the next thing we have to look out for is the longest carbon chain that contains this functional group. So starting from this carbon, I want to draw the longest possible carbon chain, which will be this four carbon. Then the next thing we want to do is to number the carbon. When there's a functional group, priority must be given to the functional group and the number assigned to this functional group needs to be as small as possible. So in this case, I have to number the carbon in this way because I want to give priority to the acid group. So acid will be position one, this will be position two, this is position three, and this will be position four. Then what we can do is actually we can name the parent and the functional group already. Four carbon, this will be butane, which represents four carbon. Acid functional group, the name of it will end off with an oic acid. So this is essentially our butanoic acid. The next thing we have to worry about are our substituents and naming all these substituents. Now, this aldine is attached to position two. So I'll call this a two aldo group. I have one methyl group attached to carbon three. So this will be a three methyl. I have another methyl group attached to also carbon three. So this will also be three methyl group. Now we're ready to combine all these terms together. When we name the organic compound, the substituent will be placed at the beginning and we will arrange the substituents in alphabetical order. So I comes before M, right? So I'll name the outer group first, then later I'll name the methyl group. Another thing is if I have two or more of the same groups, then there's no need for me to call this a 3-methyl, 3-methyl. I can combine them together. I can just call it a 3-3-dimethyl group. So the name for this compound, if we combine everything together, it would look something like this. All right, so we have the name for this compound here, 2 aldo 3 3 dimethyl butanoic acid. You notice what we do is between number and letter, we'll put a dash. Between number and number, we will put a comma. Between letter and letter, we can actually combine everything together. So in terms of interpretation, a butanoic acid will be a 4-carbon acid. Acid, of course, is position 1 because we want to give priority to the functional group. 2 aldo means out of the second carbon, I have an aldine group. 3,3-dimethyl means that I have two methyl groups. So it is represented using a dimethyl. So where is the first methyl group? The first methyl group is attached to carbon number three, which we have here. The second methyl group is also attached to carbon number three, which we have here. Now take note when we arrange the substituents by alphabetical order, we have to base it on the name of the substituents. So it is I versus M, because in this case, if I put the tag dimethyl, then some of us might have this impression, since this is a dimethyl, then I should be putting a D before an I. Then I should name this as a 3,3-dimethyl-2-aldo-butanoic acid instead. That means we take this letter D in terms of consideration when we do the arrangement. But this is not correct because the di tri tetra tag to represent the number of substituents or functional group inside the compound is not used for arrangement of substituents. All right, next, this is our second example. Now the first thing we want to identify, same thing, is the functional group. Now we have a chloral group and a bromo group, but again, these two groups are counted as substituents where we name the organic compound. So we don't really have a function group inside this compound. Then the next thing we want to do is to find the longest chain that contains this functional group. Now if you're thinking that the longest chain will be this five carbon, then actually it is not true. Now you notice we can draw an even longer continuous carbon chain, which is this six carbon chain here. So this will be our longest chain instead of the five carbon chain. So we want to be careful in terms of finding the longest chain. We don't always take the horizontal chain as the longest chain. Sometimes the question will give a side alkyl group. 
to make this an even longer carbon chain. So the next thing we want to do is to assign the number to the substituents. Now, if there's only one substituent, then we want to give priority to that substituent. So we want to make the number assigned to the substituent as small as possible. But in this case, we have a total of three substituents. You notice we have a chloro group, a bromo group, and one carbon, a methyl group. So another rule comes in. I want the sum of the positions of all these substituents to be as small as possible. Now, by right, what we do is we will number the carbon from left to right. And I consider what are the positions of all these groups. And I compare this against if I number the carbon from right to left. And again, I'll have a number assigned to each of these substituents. And I work out the total sum. And I see which sum is smaller. And that will be the way we number the carbon. So the sum of positions of the substituents will be as small as possible. But actually, there's another way to work around it is we make use of symmetry. Let me show you what I mean. In this case, the longest carbon chain, we have one carbon, two carbon, three, four, five, six carbon. Six carbon, what I can do is I can split it down the middle. So the midpoint is somewhere here. Then you notice I have two groups on the left hand side and I have one group on the right hand side of this midpoint. So what this will mean is if I number the carbon from left to right, then the sum of the numbers will tend to be small because I have more groups on the left hand side. If I start to do the numbering on the left hand side, then there is a tendency for the number assigned to the groups to be small and the total sum of the position of all these substituents will also be small. So in my opinion, I think this is way faster than numbering the carbon from left to right and I work out all this position versus I number the carbons from right to left, then I work out all this position. What we can use is we can use symmetry. I split the longest carbon chain into half. I see where the groups tend to be at. If they tend to be on one side, you name from the side, some of the number will naturally be smaller. So I would be numbering this from left to right. This would be position one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. Six carbon, this is hexane. Then the parent is settled. The next thing we want to worry about is the name of the substituent. I have a chloro group attached to the second carbon. This would be a two chloro. Then I have a bromo group attached to the second carbon. This is a two bromo group. I have a methyl group attached to carbon number four. So this is a four methyl group. Then finally, we can combine everything together. Again, arranged by alphabetical order. Bromo first, then chloro group, then methyl group, followed by the parent, which is our hexane. So therefore, the name for this compound would be a 2-bromo, 2-chloro, 4-methyl hexane. Now here's our last example for this discussion. Now we have a cyclo compound. The parent will be a cyclohexane. The parent is pretty straightforward. So maybe I can just put it down here first. So this is a cyclohexane. Then I have two substituents. I have a methyl group and I have an ethyl group. Now again, we don't have a functional group because both these groups are alkyl groups. So what we want to focus on is the sum of the position of these substituents. We want it to be as small as possible. Now it makes sense for cyclo compounds. We want either of these carbon that carries the substituent to be position one so that the sum of the number will be as small as possible. So in this case, there are two possibilities. If this methyl carbon is position one, then how do I assign the number to the ethyl group is I want to as quickly as possible assign a number to the ethyl group so that the number tends to be small. So I will number this in a clockwise way. This is position one. This will be position two. This will be position three. So if I name the methyl group as position one, the ethyl group will be position three. Some of the number will be one plus three. Now, what if I want to number the ethyl group as position one, then what will be the number assigned to the methyl group? Now, when we number cyclo compound, we don't standardize and we number it clockwise because clockwise and counterclockwise in organic compounds, it is not meaningful because if I have a compound, I just flip it around, then clockwise becomes counterclockwise and vice versa. So the same rule applies. I want to as quickly as possible assign a number to the methyl group. So I would name this counterclockwise. This would be position one, position two. The methyl group will be position three. And in this case, if I name the ethyl group as position one, then the sum of the number will also be one plus three. Now, if the methyl group is position one and the sum of the number is one plus three, and if ethyl group is position one and the sum of the number is also one plus three, then which is the one that we choose? Does it mean that we can choose either one of them? 
Now this is not possible based on the IUPAC nomenclature for organic compounds. There is only one way to name the organic compound. So if the sum of the numbers is the same, then another rule comes in which says that the first cited substituent will be given priority. So in this case, if I were to name this one carbon group, this is a methyl group, and I have a two carbon group, this is the ethyl group. Now if I were to put these two groups in the name of the organic compound, which one comes first is again based by alphabetical order, right? So E versus M, I will name the ethyl group first. In this case, since the sum of the number is the same, then what we will do is we will give priority to the ethyl group because we will write this down first. So this will be position 1 and the methyl group will be position 3. So the name for this compound will be 1-ethyl-3-methyl-cyclohexane and not 1-methyl-3-ethyl-cyclohexane. Now remember, if the sum of the position of the substituents happen to be the same, we cannot say that since the sum is the same, so I can name it anyway because according to the IOPEC system of naming of organic compounds, there is only one way to name one organic compound. So it cannot have two possible names. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the naming of organic compounds. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.